I know I say so a lot. I've been watching my videos. I say so a lot. So buttons. So what we've got here is we've got our image planes lined up. You know you're doing it right if on this, if I go to my four view, my lower right hand corner, I can see the grid and I see the wing. And on my front view corner, I can see the front view. I can see the, the, the TIE fighter front and I can see the grid. You're in good shape if you're there. If not, you can still follow along today. So what I want everyone to do is to go to create. So John, even you can just follow along. If you don't, even if you don't have image planes, you can do this. Create, polygon primitive cube options. And the one trick we had to do was we had to go three, three, three. Three divisions each. And we hit create. And I gave my reasons for not using a sphere last time. Who can tell me one reason why we don't use a sphere? The triangles in the top, bad. Bad for edge loops, bad for modeling. You can get away with it sometimes, but you want to avoid it. What's the other reason? Too many what? Too many faces, too many vertices, too many edges. When you're modeling, and this is a good note, everyone pay attention. When you're modeling, even Dylan, Dylan doesn't take this note. You want to use minimal geometry for as long as possible. And then slowly add more edges and vertexes. So you're not dealing with a like a big mess of mesh for a long time. You want to try and have that minimal amount of faces, edges, and vertexes for as much as you can. So, I, I've been teaching for 10 years. You, you could do that with less faces. You're do, you, I'm not arguing with you over it. I'm right. All right. So, width, height, and depth divisions are 333, and I hit apply. I'm sure there are reasons for doing it. All right, so I'm going to hit R, and I'm going to scale it up, right? You want to make sure your box is about as big as the, the cockpit, maybe a little smaller. OK. Then you want to grab the center faces. So it, well, the first thing we did was, well, this is a cube. We want to make it a sphere. So the first step was to grab these center faces. And make sure you grab all six. So you got four going around the side. One, two, three, four. And then you have a top, one, and a bottom, one. So you got six total. Four around the box. Then you're going to grab, you're going to hit scale again, R, and you're going to grab that center scale and push it out until it starts to be kind of become round. It reminds me of those origami boxes. You guys ever make those origami balls, right? You can actually fold paper and it kind of becomes a cube, but then you like blow really hard in it and it kind of becomes a ball. This, this is what it reminds me of, right? No, just me. So I push this out, not too far. You don't want to look looking rectangular, but you want to kind of push it out here. Whisper. Shh. Hey, cow. All right. Um, so that gets us halfway there. Or a third of the way there. Okay. But what's our problem? What's our problem with this shape, class? What's the issue? It still doesn't look perfectly round because of what? What's poking out? What? Someone said it. The corners. The corners, and no sphere has corners. The TIE fighter doesn't have corners. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to a different mode. Someone guess which mode? Vertex, right? Right click, hold, go to vertex. Shapam. I'm going to make my vertexes bigger by going to display. You don't have to do this polygon vertex size, just so you can see them on my demo. Boop. Now they're huge. Okay. Now we have eight vertices to click on. We got the, the top four corners. One, two, three, four. And we've got the bottom four to click on. One, two, that was a good one. Three, four. 
It's like we're minions. Bottom. <laughs> My daughter just watched minions, so that's where she is. Right. So you got one, two, three, four on top, one, two, three, four. So you have a total of eight vertexes, and you do the same thing. You hit scale, but this time, instead of scaling it outward, you, hail it, you scale it inward. And you'll start to see, hey, that's looking very spherical. That's looking pretty darn good. So in two steps, in two steps, we got a cube looking very spherical. We're going to do one more to be a little nitpicky, right? But we've got four, we've got, excuse me, six faces and eight corners and scaling those in or out gave us a pretty good sphere already. And if this is all you did, that would be okay. So you, you take the six faces and you scale them out and you take the eight corners or the eight vertexes and you scale them in. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, but we're gonna do one more because we like being nitpicky. And it helps me teach you one more thing here. Okay, so there's something that happened. Everyone look, look closely. Look closely at that, that sphere-ish type thing. Something happened when I hit the, the, the faces and scaled them out. What happened? Look at that center face. How is it in relation to all the other ones? It's what? It's a little bigger, right? So it would be nice if we can kind of flatten these out again, right? So this, I, I like to do this because it also reminds you the power of the selection tool. So double click over here. Everyone see this? Double click on your arrow. Double click on your arrow. Double click and check off. Check off the pilot and Star Trek. Check off camera based selection. So now we're gonna be selecting through our object. So make sure camera-based selection does not have a check on it. Okay. And then you can close that. Oh, wrong thing. Wrong close button. There. All right. Now, what you're gonna do is right click, go to vertex mode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag a box or a marquee selection is what they like to call it, are over those four center vertices. And what I did was I actually selected the other ones behind it as well because I unchecked that. Mr. G, can I not do that? Yes. If you had it checked on, just to kind of show you the different way of operating here, going back to vertex, right? I could select those four and then just spin around on this view and select those four, right? Or holding the shift key. So I'm just kind of saving time by going between camera base and non-camera base, okay? I got two more to select though. Going back to my front view, I'm gonna drag a box. I'm gonna leave these alone. These are gonna be my reference ones, but I wanna grab these two and I'm gonna grab these two. And what they did was it actually, I said two, but it actually grabbed four. So I'm grabbing all the vertices on the center face. Now I could do it by faces, but I'd rather do it. Faces gets a little sloppy. I wanted to kind of show you what camera-based selection, why you'd want to turn it off sometimes. And now guess what tool I'm going to use? What tool? What am I going to do to those vertices? No one wants to take a guess? No one? What button am I going to press? W, E, or R? R. I'm going to hit R again. You know, might be noticing we're using scale more than move, right? Um, and now I'm going to pull these down until they become relatively flat. And some of you might be saying, oh, but the, a sphere might actually bulb them out a little bit. But I like to kind of keep them flat. Either way. Maybe a little... I'm just eyeballing it, just eyeballing it. We're not gonna get precise. We work in a lot of ish here. We work at, you know, make something 10 units ish, 10 ish units, 20 ish frames, right? 
All right, we got one more set to do here. The last thing I do is you want to have those four vertices in the middle selected again. So I'm going to click off of it or click on one vertex to kind of deselect all those. And I have to do it this way as well. And I'm going to have to do it one sideways as well. So I'm going to get these top ones again. Oh, I, not again. Sorry. We haven't picked these top ones yet. So I'm going to get these top two, which is actually going to be four. And I'm going to get these bottom two, which is actually four. Someone knocking? Just let him in. Because we're serving. Come in. And with those top two, what's up? No, it's okay. Um, and I'm going to select the center four again. So top two, bottom two, and the center four. And this time I'm going to scale it so that they're straighter this way. And maybe bulb them out just a little bit. Now again, like I said, if you don't do this step, it's okay. If you, I'm being nitpicky and I wanted to show you this feature, but if you, all you did was shrink in the corners and pull out the center faces, you'd have a reasonably good sphere to play with, right? We got to do one more. Someone want to guess what we got to do? We got to go to which view? We got one more set to do. If I go to my perspective, you'll see it, right? So some of them are looking better. I got one more to do on the side view. So go to the side view, hit spacebar, put your mouse over this one, and go to the side, and then spacebar again. Everyone remember that trick? Okay. So now, same thing. I'm gonna get the top two, the middle four, and the bottom two, and I'm gonna scale them, R, oops, R, and pull them in just a little bit. And I like it. We're good. And that's the way to kind of make a boxy sphere. We can do a little bit more, but in three mode, that looks great. Hardly tell the difference. There's other ways to do this too. I'm showing you this way. Another way is to actually make a sphere. Create polygon sphere as a reference. Right? And I can kind of match and snap uh, vertexes here. So you see it's not as perfect as the sphere. Yeah, but it's pretty good, darn good. We're good with it. So you can use a sphere as a reference image and then pull your cube out to match the sphere. That's another way to do it. But this looks good. We're happy with that. All right. Moving right along. Everyone, hit Command S. Be sure to save. Saving's good. Now we're going to make one wing. We're going to make one wing and we're going to extrude from the side. So what I want you to do is find that side, right? If you're having trouble in your perspective view, right, you want to make sure that it's facing this way. So we're going to grab the left side, or excuse me, stage right, or excuse me, stage left, audience right, we're gonna grab this side. Did I say that right? Who's a theater person? Did I do that right? Stage left, audience right. So we're gonna grab all nine faces from that side, like that. <clears throat> All nine faces. And guess what we're gonna do? Who remembers the tool? It starts with an E. What? Extrude, or Command E. So I'm gonna show you where it is, both again. Edit Mesh. Extrude, don't be rude, extrude, or command E, right, either way. And 
you'll notice our tool looks a little funky. It's like, it's kind of wanked in a, in a weird way. I didn't show you this last time, but there's this little tiny blue button when you hit the activation for the, the extrude tool. And if you click on it, it, it orients the tool towards the world rather than the object. And both are, there's good reasons to do both. Sometimes you're gonna wanna do it one way, sometimes you're gonna wanna do it the other way. But for right now, we want it oriented towards the world. And you're gonna have to do this every extrusion, right? So you're gonna have to switch it to global. And then we're gonna pull out my extrusion, grab the red arrow, make sure you're grabbing the red arrow. And we're gonna pull it out to about there. All right. So no, notice I'm using my side view and I'm using it like a reference image. Just, just out a little bit. Okay. And it's obviously too big, but we're going to deal with that in a second. We got to, we got to do something else first. All right. Can anyone guess what we're going to do? It's kind of a trick. We're going to extrude a lot of times. Yeah. Good call. But we're going to do the opposite of what we just did. What did we do to the cube? What do we do to the cube? What shape did we make the cube? We, we blanked it. We, we, what did we do? No one. We purified it. We made it a sphere or we rounded it, right? Guess what we got to do to the wing now? We got to flatten it, but we just rounded it. We needed to round it for a lot of reasons, but now that we're extruding outward for the wing, we want to flatten it. Okay. And so I'm going to show you a, a few new techniques and tricks here that we didn't cover in the previous one. Okay. So now we've pulled this out, but you notice it has a curve here, but our wing here eventually gets flat. So we kind of want to flatten this out. Okay. So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to go back to one extrusion. So I've only made one extrusion, right? I'm going to hit undo. Oh, not undo. I'm sorry. Don't hit undo. I don't know why I hit. I'm just going to click off of it and I'm going to go back to vertex mode. Vertex mode. And I can flatten it now. I could eyeball it. If you want to eyeball it, you can just kind of select a few vertexes and push them in and be like, oh, let's get in there. You're gonna have to, you're probably gonna have to touch every vertex on that extrusion if you want to eyeball it. However, Daniel here, Daniel hates that answer, right, Daniel? Daniel wants to be precise and make it perfectly flat. Purely flat. Okay. Um, so what I want you to do is look up to the top of your program here and find the magnets. There's a whole bunch of magnets. These magnets symbolize the word snap. The feature is called snap. Snap is a universal term, just like copy and paste. Snap works in Photoshop. Snap works in Premiere. Snap works in Final Cut. Snap's a feature that gets used a lot. Snap means is that it makes certain points magnetic so that when you get close, it makes it exactly that point. So you want to use the magnet for the grid, this one that has like the hashtag on it, choose the magnet for the grid. That's this one over here. All right? So it's right up here. Put it in context, it's right up there. I'm gonna click on it. Okay, be very careful with the magnet. If you do the universal grab, it squishes things sometimes. What you wanna do, or it might accidentally pull it up too high. So notice it's getting jumpy. And some of you accidentally stumbled across this. Right? What it's doing is, is it's pulling it towards a grid line. The grid lines are now magnetic. So it's ever one you're closest to, it's going to snap it right there. Right? So what you're going to do is, you can kind of work in pairs, because you know these two are, are right on the same line. And I'm just going to pull those. And now those are perfectly flat. Right? And I'm only going to make it flat on the x-axis. So I'm only going to be grabbing the red arrow. So once again, I'm going to grab these. One, two, three. I'm going to hit W. 
That tool again is called Snap, and it is right there. And so I'm just going to flatten out this extrusion. And you don't even have to be inside view. You can kind of, I got to get these guys down here. One, two. Now, if you do it multiple and they're not even, like these corners are a little bit further out, it will kind of keep them as a group and snap the group, not the individual, right? So I need to, those, you see how the, the center ones are kind of pulled out? I got to pull those back in. Oop, that way. Oops, and I missed two. This is how you make something perfectly flat. Is snapping it to a grid, or I can snap it to other things. There's other functions, but snap to the grid is what we're going to be playing with right now. And then when you're done, don't forget to turn it off. Oops. Right, so we got to... good I'm happy with that yes 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 oh maybe the top the top needs to there you go so that's how you get a precise one again if you want to eyeball it flat I'm cool with that it's your first project you can eyeball it but I know a lot of you like to be precise come on down so don't forget to turn it back off when it's done by unchecking it so it's active if it's got that light blue. I know it's very dark when you walk in from the outside. You're totally blinded. We're vampires in here. Got him. Thank you. Okay. We're making a TIE fighter. What are you doing in your class? That's right. We're making Star Wars stuff. Okay. I guess it's just as cool. Um, i give you guys some time to get caught up. But um, let me show you one last pitfall. But someone always falls under. Class, ooh, hit three mode for a second and go back to one mode. Right? If you have some weird extra lines that you swear you didn't really put there, here's what happened. So don't, everyone watch. This is a common pit, what we call a pitfall. This is a common pitfall that happens, and you just gotta learn from it. So it happened to like three of you already. Everyone looking? Cameron, you're looking? Common pitfall. I'm going to go to right click face. I'm going to select my faces. And I'm going to hit extrude, right? So I'm going to hit extrude. Command E. Go to universal. And I'm going to pull it out. Oops, I'm on snap still. Turn off snap, right? And I pull out. Oops, I forgot one face. Command undo. Command Z, sorry, Command undo. Command Z, it's back to normal, right? Right? Wrong, right? There is that face, the extrusion has not been undone. The only thing I undid was the move after the extrusion. So if you extrude something and then undo it, make sure you hit undo several times or Double check with three mode, because you'll notice I have this weird thing here. So Kari, that's what happened, right? So when you hit undo, you just didn't hit undo enough, and sorry, but it should be okay going the other direction. Does that make sense? Okay, because the other side will get, don't, because we're gonna delete the other half in a little bit. What? Yeah, so I'm gonna undo again. One, two, three, there. So when you're working with extrusions, it's nice to double check in three mode, because three will really kind of show you the mistakes you've made, right? One might hide it. So once again, I'll, I'll mess up again. I'm gonna not grab the center face. One, da, da, da. yeah, got it, G, make extrusions. Okay, cool. Command E, whoop, go to universal, pull it out. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, undo, click off of it. It looks perfectly normal, right? It looks like nothing happened to it, but if I hit three mode, You'll see that this it didn't extrude that that extrusion is still made. I have to go back one more step. There you go. Now I'm okay to extrude. It happens a lot. Um, the way you fix it is you delete the faces and then you merge the edges back together with with the with the the stitching tool I showed you the, the target vertex. Uh, that's how it's going to get put back together. Um, but it, that takes a while. 
Kari, the other thing you can do is it might be easier to start over. Like just kind of delete it and go, okay, I know how to round this out real quick, right? Um, that's another possibility. But I think if you just start on the other side, I think you'll be good. So if you do the left side instead of the right side. So common, common mistake happens a lot. It's happened to me. It happened to me deep into my character model and I had to restart my entire character model because I didn't actually know the tools to fix it. So I just started over and I cried a little, just a little, but I cried. Okay. Um, so going back to where we should be, you should have one big extrusion. And again, if it's not perfectly flat with the snap tool, I don't care. If you eyeballed it flat, that's fine. And now we're going to push it back. We're going to select these faces here. Right? And we're going to hit W now. We're not going to extrude them again. We're actually going to push them back. And what we want to do is we want to push them, you know, to a good point on my front view. Now, this is why we have the image planes. We're going to be using the image planes as a reference. So I'm going to move, I'm going to select those nine faces back just in time, though. Selecting those nine faces that I flattened out. I'm going to move them to this spot right here, right before it stops sloping, right about there. Okay, I'm going to move them to about there, and then I'm going to hit scale, R, right? And then I'm going to scale them down vertically and horizontally, just to kind of get it to be like the narrow part of the stem. And don't worry, I messed up, but it's easy to fix. Don't worry. Just do what I just said, right? So scale them down until it, that, that the shape lines up evenly with that stem. So you're going to scale it a little on the green. Get the height. And you also want to make it a little skinnier, so a little on the blue. Someone want to tell me the mistake I made? You can tell me. I make mistakes. This is healthy. Making mistakes is healthy. What's the mistake? Anyone know? I'll give you a hint. That's your hint. What's the mistake I made? No one wants to say it. Daniel, what mistake did I make? Huh? No, I don't have to snap it. We want to extrude it out here. We want it to come down to that size first and then come. So we lined it up here. That's totally fine. Push it back now. So take those nine faces and push them back to about right there. And then you probably have to scale them up a little bit. Sorry. That's okay. No problem, G. We get you. Thanks, guys. You're really understanding class. So originally, I said pull it out to here, made the mistake, sorry, pull it back, and line it up with, with these points. I jumped one extrusion. I skipped one extrusion step. Now I'm just going to extrude again. Command E. I'm going to repeat. And remember, you're going to have to hit this universal switch every time. I'm going to hit that universal switch. Boop. I'm going to pull it out wide again and this time I'm going to shrink it again to match that. So I've made two extrusions. I'm going to repeat it in case you got lost. Repeating all the steps for repetition's sake. Okay so I flattened it, my faces that's where we left off and then I gave a big spiel about undoing your extrusions and being careful, right? So I'm going to hit W here. And I'm going to scale. I'm going to push my I'm going to push my extrusion back a bit. And I'm going to scale them down R until they line up with the stem here. I uh, I don't know what else to call this part of the wing, so I'm going to call it the stem. Right? The stem is I'm referring to as this thing. There's probably an official term for it. 
I'm calling it the stem. I'm also going to make it a little skinnier, something like that. Once I have it lined up, I'm going to extrude one more time. Command E, boop. Going to hit the little universal switch, boop. I'm going to pull it out with the red arrow. And you'll notice the stem is still pretty big, so I want to shrink it down. Green arrow. And I'll probably make it a little skinnier too. Not green arrow, I'm sorry. Green box, green box. And then blue box or scale. Something like that. If only there is a way to see through, if only there is a way to see through this. Anyone remember? What's, what's the button for? for? So I can, oh, you gotta be on the right window. Four, Ooh, still not on the right window. Gotta click on the right window. Four, there we go. So four lets you see a wireframe, but you might be saying, gee, that kind of sucks. That makes it really hard to see. That's some really skinny lines. Is there another way? So hit five again, and there is another way. Hit space bar up here, so you get to your, your, your front view, so that all you see is, is the front view. So put your mouse over it and hit space bar. And again, there's no real way you have to memorize this button. It's this button right here. This is called X-ray. What's the difference between 4 and X-ray? 4 is wireframe. It only shows you the edges and the vertices. X-ray is this button right here. And it shows you, it makes all the faces semi-transparent or semi-opaque. So you can kind of see it. It's very convenient sometimes, especially when you're working with an image. It's called X-ray mode, right? Um, notice the other windows are not in X-ray. You have to turn every window on to X-ray if you want it. So what I like to do is kind of, I like to have my front and my side view on X-ray. And I like to have my perspective on solid, right? And everyone likes to do it differently. That's fine. So x-ray mode. You don't really need it, but it's a nice to have. All right, going back to my faces here. Right? There are my faces. All right, now I'm going to extrude it one, two, three, four more times to get it here. Right? Four more times to get it here. I could have done an extra extrusion up here if I wanted to, to kind of match the slope a little bit. But right, we're making an N64 X-Wing. We're not making a PS4 X-Wing, right? We're making 1990s models, not keeping it simple. So I'm going to take those nine faces again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to hit Command E. Or I can go to Edit Mesh Extrude, Command E. Hit that little switch button again, the global switch. Pull it down, make it a little skinnier, and then pull it out just a smidge. Because you notice there's like a dramatic slope right there. And you might also notice I'm making mine a little bit bigger than the drawing. Like these drawings are reference images, right? These drawings don't control you. you if you're like, eh, I want to make the stem a little fatter, make the stem a little fatter. If you're like, eh, I want to make it a little skinnier, make it a little skinnier. So this, this next extrusion, I didn't really pull it out that far. I pulled it out very very small on the X axis or the red button or the red arrow, right? But I, I scaled it dramatically because it has this like lip to it, right? And then I'm going to extrude again, command E. So remember what I said, right? We're going to extrude, 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 I'm gonna extrude. I'm going to pull it out wide. I'm going to get it. Oh, sorry. I hate that thing. I'm going to pull it out wide again, up to the edge of the, 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 the actual wing part. And notice it gets bigger again. So it kind of slopes down, and then it kind of slopes back up. So now I'm going to turn off x-ray so you can see it better. It looks something like that. So your front view should look something like that. We got one, two three we've got three more extrusions to do let's do it let's do it we got time so we're gonna do three more extrusions command e i'm kind of rushing a little bit we'll get three more Ooh. i'm gonna hit 
the little global tool here. Boop. I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit, just a little bit. And now, now the fun part begins. Now I'm gonna take the scale button for X and go huge. I'm gonna go I'm gonna need my side view so I can see it. Maybe I turn off X-ray for a second so you all can see it. I'm making this thing big, right? It gotta go as tall as that wing now, right? And then I'm gonna take the blue one and go out this way as well. There you go. So I make a big tall one. Don't worry about it not being hexagonal like the wing yet. We'll, we'll get there. We're going to get there. Now let's do one more extrusion and call it a day. Do one more extrusion, Command E, and go ahead and hit that global tool again, and pull it out just enough for the thickness of the wing. Check it out. We have a crude half of a TIE fighter. Shabwa. Go brag to your other periods. You made a freaking TIE fighter. What are you doing here? We're just learning Pythagorean theorem. Mm. We're applying math artistically. Suck it out, bro. Right. So you're going to scale it down. Three. Da, 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 da. Oh, you made another two. Pull it out. down to match the length of the stem. And we can correct that in other things tomorrow. All right, let's do one last step. I know I, I jammed through, it was a lot of lecture today. Um, go ahead and hit Command S for save. Actually, that's it. We'll do a save as tomorrow. Well, let's do a save as right now. File, save scene as. So everyone do this next step. Go to file, save scene as. And let's call it TIE Fighter Half, or Crude, or Rough. TIE Fighter Rough. If you got lost along the way, that's why I record things. Don't worry, the first thing we're going to do Monday is we're going to help each other out. We're going to do a little class gallery, and we're going to walk around, and people that are ahead are going to help, and people that are behind are going to get helped. So don't worry about that, okay? Please save. Mo, what we talk about? Please save, file, save, right? And then please go to Maya and choose quit. And then choose shut down. Options, I know I didn't get back to you, sorry. And then choose the apple and shut down. 